External monitor support for iPad is finally here in a full public release. I've been trying this out a huge amount in all of the beta releases over the past five months or so, and every time I have, I've always filled those videos with ifs, buts, and maybes because it's been quite buggy to say the least. But now it's officially out, I think it's time we make a full review video of it. So let's get right into it. Okay, before we get started, to get this set up, you're going to need one of the M-powered iPads. So that's the 2022 iPad Air with M1, the 2021 iPad Pro with M1, or the M2 iPad Pro from 2022. All of the other iPads regrettably don't work, so you're going to need one of those first off. Secondly, you're going to need to make sure that your iPad is on the latest software, or at least on 16.2 or higher, which by the time you're watching this, you should be. Thirdly, you're going to need to connect a keyboard and mouse to the iPad, and obviously you're going to need to connect it to a monitor as well. Any monitor up to 6K should work absolutely fine, and a lot of ultra-wide monitors are supported too, which is really good. Just to note, this won't work unless you have a keyboard and mouse attached to the iPad, it won't even come up as an option. But once you do, once you plug in, it should just pop right up and you should be ready to go. Right, let's get into the good stuff because there's plenty here which I really, really like and I think a lot of you are going to enjoy as well. Let's start off the most obvious thing. Having your iPad apps open in multitasking real windows is a legitimately cool experience on the big screen. It's nice to have them all there and open and being able to switch between them in a very similar fashion to Windows or Mac OS is really, really great. And when it works well, it works really well. You can almost forget you're actually sitting on an iPad and it can feel like you're sitting on a normal kind of desktop computer, which is a really cool experience. Not to mention when you drag some of those apps full screen, they really have that room to breathe. Some good examples of that are LumaFusion, which is a video editor, but that opens up into a full screen experience and it feels like you're then in Final Cut or Premiere Pro or something like that. It's the same with Lightroom, which is where I edit all of my photos. If you open that up on there, it takes up the whole screen and it's great to work on. I also find some iPad apps actually better than their internet counterpoints. So the Twitter app, for example, on iPad is great and having it on the screen is fantastic. It's the same with Pinterest too. Scrolling on there, I find a much more pleasurable experience than I do just opening it up in the browser. Something else I really like too is the fact that Stage Manager, which is what's running on the iPad when you use an external monitor, kind of forces you to work in separate zones. And I actually find that really useful when you're trying to focus. For example, I can have all of my social apps open up on one page of Stage Manager, and I can just swipe to get back to my productivity ones. So I can have Notion and Google Docs and my to-do list open on one, for example. I could have YouTube open on a full screen in another, and then I can have all of my socials sitting on another. So I could just flick between them really easily. And having your workspaces all separated up like that is actually really interesting and it's quite a nice way to make sure you stay focused without losing track of what you're up to. Not to mention while all of this is going on, your iPad remains fully functional, so you can still use it as a touch-based interface. And if you have it in front of you, in front of the keyboard, for example, which is probably the best place to put it, you can still have Apple Pencil input, you can still do all of your touch-based apps, and more than anything, you've always got that constant second screen. So if you just want something up like a lo-fi playlist or perhaps your to-do list or perhaps something else that you need to keep referencing, you can just glance down or to the side or to wherever your iPad is and get all of that information. It's a really nice feature and in a way you're getting a second kind of smart monitor just thrown into the setup. In terms of performance as well, it's really good. Now I'm on the M2 iPad Pro for this video, but I haven't noticed any clear difference between the M1 and the M2 because I've tried them both. But performance across the board is really, really, really quick. You're not gonna get any massive slow ups on here and I've not had any stuttering or weirdness or any kind of indication that it's slowing down. And that goes for heat as well. I've been checking the iPad every other hour to make sure it's not getting too hot or anything like that and it's always been relatively cool. Obviously that will change depending on what you're doing. I'm sure if you spend three or four hours gaming, then it's going to get hot and it'll probably throttle at some point. But for all of the use I've been doing as a kind of creative, nothing's slowed down and nothing's got too hot. And that's a really relieving thing to have. I also really like that this is kind of an instant computing experience. Once you plug the iPad in, it's up and ready to go straight away. There's no loading, there's no waiting or anything like that when turning on a more traditional desktop. So if I need to work away from the desk, I can just unplug one cable and go. And then when I'm back, I can just plug it in and instantly I have that full desktop experience. So yeah, there's plenty of really, really good stuff here. And it's almost tempting to make an entire desk setup 
based around it, which I did do back in the betas. So if you wanna see that, I'll link it up here. But it's nice to think an iPad can now power an entire desk setup. Before we move on, I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Speakly. Speakly is a language learning app that's actually been developed by two polygots. They've researched thousands of language learners for over six years, and together they've created a unique app that teaches words and sentences based on their relevance in real life situations. This means you don't actually learn anything you can't actually use. Everything is relevant and essential, and it actually helps you start speaking the language faster. Speakly gives you everything you need to get to grips with a new language, new vocabulary, vocabulary, speaking and writing exercises, listening comprehension, and it will even suggest music recommendations in the language you're learning, so you're truly surrounded by it. This unique methodology helps you learn languages up to five times faster than normal, so you'll go from nothing to a solid set of speaking skills in around three to four months of using the app for around 30 minutes a day. And of course, you don't have to do it all at once. You can set reminders at your preferred time of day for short bursts of learning that suits you. Speakly is available on iOS and and Android and it's free for the first seven days. And then if you do decide it's for you, you can get 60% off a yearly subscription by checking out the link in the description. So if speaking another language is something you've always fancied, then make it happen in 2023 with Speakly. During all of my testing for this, I actually found there's some useful stuff you can do as well to make your experience a little bit better. And for me, one of the best things I did was I generally found I wasn't using the iPad itself loads when I was working on the external monitor. I was always on the external monitor and not so much on the iPad. So I made a kind of iPad control center and I used loads of widgets to make a new home screen. And on that home screen is everything I would need to, to kind of quickly control stuff. So I've got my shortcuts on there. I've got my files on there. I've got a bunch of other things like calendar and weather apps. So I can quickly glance at it to get some information. I actually have this set up as a shortcut which is a little button on my home screen so when I plug in the iPad I press that and I go to this kind of iPad external monitor control setup which I really really like. Another thing I like to do as well and something I really recommend is to use a trackpad rather than a mouse. I tend to find the iPad's touch interface software just works a lot better with a trackpad and it feels a lot more natural than a mouse which feels kind of sticky and strange when going around iPad OS especially on the bigger screen. So that's worth keeping in mind. Also in settings, you can toggle on or off the sidebar for stage manager and the dock as well for the external monitor. Personally, I like leaving the dock on so I can swipe apps up from it and bring them into the multitasking window. But I leave the sidebar off because swiping between the spaces is just so easy. But it's nice that this preference is here and you can pick what you want. Moving on now to the bad points or to things which I think could really do with some improvement. So to start us off, and I think this is the thing people will have the most trouble getting used to, is you can't resize the windows exactly how you want and you can't put them exactly where you want. While the iPad interface does look like Windows or a Mac, the second you start interacting with the windows, you realize that it's actually very different. They all snap into places and some things look very odd if you scale them wrong or you drag the window to kind of like a size it's not used to and you can't put them anywhere either. Secondly, on the other bad points is some apps are just outright not ready for this. They just kind of don't really work on the external monitor. And one of the best examples of that is an app I use all the time, which is GoodNotes 5. The second you open that up on an external display, it just scales incorrectly immediately or it just opens up and looks really strange and the app kind of just doesn't work. And unfortunately, if you open it up on the iPad instead, it actually hijacks the main screen too. So you can't really use that app, which feels like such a shame because I use it all the time. Not all of them are that bad, but some of them just don't make use of the space at all. Affinity Photo, which is another kind of pro level app, just doesn't fill the screen. You can make the window quite big, but it won't fill it. And even DaVinci Resolve, which is being hailed as this new big video editor and the first you know, professional pro app, that won't even fill the big screen either. And sadly, this goes for gaming too. I tried out a huge amount of games on the iPad with external monitor support, and not one of them gave me the full 16 by nine ratio. I really hope developers will get behind it, but I think this is one of the biggest kind of shames. And lastly, and this is probably one of the biggest deals for me and for everyone that will be using it, it still crashes quite a lot. There's been times where I've been using it and everything's been going fine, and I go to resize an app or just to switch between apps, and then I'll just get booted straight back to the home screen and I'll need to unlock my iPad again. It's just kind of really, really weird. Not to mention sometimes as well when I haven't been using the iPad for a few hours and I come back to it, 
some of those apps will just show as black windows, which don't have any way to interact with them other than closing them and reopening them. And that's never a nice feeling, especially if you're working on something. So those are the big things which I hope kind of get addressed first so we can start using it as a more desktop style setup. But there's a huge amount of small things which are just kind of really weird or kind of strange to pick up on. So I've made a list of those or the worst ones. So let's go through it. First up is you can't sleep the iPad without sleeping the external monitor. So you can't have a single screen experience on this, even if you want to. There's no decent audio output setting, so you can't kind of say where you want the audio to come from, whether it's coming from your monitor or some external speakers or your AirPods or you know other headphones. Sometimes audio will just cut out too for no real reason. So if you're listening to Spotify and then you switch to a YouTube video that's paused or something like that, it will preemptively pause your Spotify so it can play the YouTube video, even if it's not playing, which is frustrating as well. On that audio note as well, a lot of volume controls in apps just don't work. YouTube doesn't work and Spotify volume doesn't work either. If you click the options menu at the top right on the monitor, it opens up on the iPad, not on the monitor where you'd expect it to be. Webcam support is all over the place as well. You can't plug in an external webcam, which is a real shame. So you have to use the inbuilt one, which would be fine but the second you open up zoom or google meet or something like that and your ipad isn't facing you exactly you appear upside down or the wrong way around on whatever you're using so to round up what i think of external monitor support on the ipad is i think it shows so much promise and i really do love the idea of being able to use an ipad for kind of everything but honestly this still feels like a beta release even though it's a public one there's so many little issues across here which just makes using it in the long term really really tough i think some people will be able to use it really well though if you just work in the browser or if you know work in the kind of more simple based apps you can get a great experience and it's really really nice to have and you know being able to plug it in and plug it out really quickly and just go somewhere and come back to the desk is a wonderful experience so if you do do more professional things and you need access to those more kind of powerful and creative apps then I still don't think the iPad is the way to go for a desktop setup especially not for someone like me who makes content full-time I need something that's going to be super reliable and right now the iPad's just not the way to go for that so that just about wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've been using external monitor support on your iPad, let me know in the comments below what you've been enjoying about it, what you haven't been enjoying about it, or if there's anything you think I've missed in this video, do let me know. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.